Dave here. I am in my office here and I want to talk to you about some of these master artisans out there doing faux rock at levels that I can only aspire to. I'm going to have a little sip of my coffee here. We'll just have a little happy face moment. There it is. Have your, you need a cup of, you need a cup with a happy face on it. You need happy faces all around your life actually. Uh, help us smile in the midst of terror, drama, drama and torment, torture and craziness on all the corners of the globe. So I'm gonna have a sip of this and then we'll look at an amazing, amazing artist. Artist? Artist. <laughs> My buddy, Richard Winget. All right, we're gonna talk about that right now. All right. So he sent me a bunch of pictures on a project that he did. I asked him to send me something and he sent me these still photos showing the construction process of these to some degree. The, the steel work we don't see, but that's very common and you see a bunch of that in other videos I have and you can endless sources of that online and stuff too but first we'll step back here and look at this quick little video and see what it shows us whoa all right before we start the video let's just take a look at this thing we can see what we can see nice little feature in the backyard there's a private residence I am assuming look at the colors shadowing the little bit of the antiquing effect here it's got a wonderful brush technique over here a couple little textures little river rocks thrown in here these guys are probably pieces of uh, rubble concrete from the shotcrete or he just made those up with cement and then he could have done a piece of foam covered with uh, material to get that look it looks like it's locked in right there water comes off a nice weir right here and then splits and comes down in two different places we've got some close-up video of that that we'll look at in just a second but uh very simple, nice design. Notice the, the uh, asymmetry. There's a nice stretch right here with nice subtle hues. Richard is master of the, of the color. Color is the hardest part just about once you can get the shapes you need. Just getting the color right, a lot of times they just seem a little off, but Richard's got this stuff mastered. He's just absolutely one of the best out there. And absolutely love that subtle hues that are there. You see the darker colors there, yellows a little bit oranges browns darker darker you know raw umber kind of color waterfall splits so let's move it to the move it to the left as we pan look at that oh that's so cool a nice big shape here ups and downs ins and outs smaller rock here tiny tiny rocks relative to these big bouldery shapes sort of has a little bit of a ocean rock kind of feel a little bit like it's weathered these uh, brush strokes that uh, show us that texture and uh, the way the fractures are absolutely just about perfect just darn perfect if you can look at the real thing it's going to be pretty darn close to this as we rotate around satellite rock right there good to have those satellite rocks right there very very helpful gives dynamism to the whole project you have the different size elements scattered around the property and the pool space sometimes we'll put rocks in the back over here too as well so we keep panning around you can see this beautiful I just got to bring this back we'll, we'll rotate it around again take another run through here wonderful project we're gonna break it down a little closer at it but one of my favorite techniques of finishing pools that is a cantilevered poured in place coping they're absolutely absolutely gorgeous it's like a mat around a picture see that in the back oh that's beautiful so beautiful man it looks like it's poured in place sometimes they make they have custom-made stone like bricks I don't know if this is poured in place. It might be custom made bricks that are brought in to fit around the pool and they make templates for each each specific piece as I understand it. Absolutely beautiful. Nice little raised area in the back here. Steps up again over here and there's that rock that I was talking about. Very cool to have satellite rocks scattered around. Okay guys, moving on. We see a shockcreted faux rock. It's on the outside of the pool. I'll put my little pointer over here. You can see that above my head. The pool space is over here, and this goes outside the pool. There'll be deck over it. There's some pipes down down there. The side of the outside of the pool, right down there below. What you see below my little head, and you can see this has got the shotcrete look. We got the shooting aspects uh, coming right out of the nozzle to give you that wonderful texture right there. We'll zoom in and take a look at that. You can actually see the aggregate that uh, is used. Uh, that might have been sprayed with water to expose that little uh, texture you see right there and actually see the color of the stones that could have had a little bit of spritz of water. You see it over here as well. Or he threw some in, threw a little gravel in there to add again more texture. So he's following sort of the irregular shapes of 
the shockrete itself it's it's pretty darn cool i mean you can just push this stuff around and it sort of responds the way the material responds it shows you exactly kind of what what's going on with it and it, it sort of intuitively <laughs> the mud intuitively tells you how to carve it <laughs> oh that's pretty weird but yes it's a very odd thing but you can see he leaves the texture here he's just beginning this process because we see as we uh, fold, as we zoom out, he's got the trowel there down here in the corner, and he's got a brush there too. So we see that, and that's pretty pointed trowel. So that's getting some nice deep cuts and digs to get that kind of a look. All these pipes over here, again, often something that happens when you're digging pools, they'll just take care of things and cut pipes and just just bury them. All these, it looks like they're redoing probably this pool uh, because there's rust up here. We see a piece of steel. It looks like that's jammed in there and epoxied in or or just stuck in or that's it looks like steel so anyway you can see all the rubble around here all that stuff gets covered with deck and so this is just a a big satellite rock again on the outside of the pool we'll click forward he's going to start cutting and trialing here this is richard winged again amazing guy i gotta tell you i wrote a i did a uh, a podcast on blessing and curses and i just got to tell you richard was so kind you know i've helped him out of the years just sending work his way and and no big deal no expectations and out of the blue last christmas he sent me a thank you uh payment which was just amazing <clears throat> he called him a god wink <laughs> so very cool very cool guy very generous and thoughtful fellow so richard winget uh, an amazing guy super 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 talented and stuff so we see him working on this rock and troweling it out we do have some videos we're going to show you uh more like we did at the beginning of this video here we're looking more closely at the way he chops things out he leaves a lot of the the roughness there you see from the shotcrete process he had that brush in his hand too and we can see that that is also allowing to allowing him to put in some textures which we'll see closer here it looks like some of the gravel is thrown in <clears throat> right there. You can see it's sort of got the color in the rock and the uh, boulder structure, but those things have color. So I have a feeling he's sort of flinging those into the mud. We have a little bit of the brushing sweeps marks over here. I think this is on the inside, maybe of the pool on that side of it. We're marching along. Look at these cracks. Oh, he's throwing that in right there for sure. When it's wet, and then just sort of pushing things around, sharpening the edges of things, and then putting in nice thin knife cracks that show um, collapsing, cracking, you know, uh, weathering aspects of, of the faux rock work. We'll zoom in here. You can see uh, that that's just simple stuff, a simple little trial mark. But our human eyes are trying to make sense of everything, and we will make things look like things we know. There's that pea gravel thrown in there. And uh, some of it's been troweled, pushed in a little more, and has some of that uh, stuff that you have. The mortar mix includes the cementaceous material that gives you the, the gray little slimy look in here. He's pushing the mud around to get that. So cool. Oh, man. Love the stuff. Okay, moving on. Here we see the scaffold, and it's important to have scaffolding. And Richard does it the right way. Unlike me and my ladders, uh, he actually does it like the big time pros. And he did. T I did ask him. These, this is this is his uh, uh, scaffolding stuff. I don't know how to how that works, but it's probably pretty straightforward how to put that stuff together. Really important to have the so solid, safe scaffolding systems built up. At this point, he's painting in the project. Uh, if you put these poles up high enough, you can get a tarp up there for your for your shade in the. Uh, the heat of the summer uh and uh, so beautiful look at the tones i just love that the colors are awesome uh sometimes i saw another guy who does uh, spencer dean an amazing full rock i'll see if i can do a do one of his uh, projects um artist uh highlight and he used air hoses to blow out areas of the moist wet material uh shotcrete i think he did that with and probably also the other um mortar mix texture coats here's that brushing on that side you see over there with the uh, i assume it's just a rugged brush probably has a little bit of set cement uh, in it to give them that look here's the colorants over here and trowels all the normal stuff we all use uh, that looks like it could be an air hose so maybe he also maybe richard also uses air to blow things out 
Richard has a product called Carve Right uh, that he came up with a formulation. I've not used it, but he says it's awesome. It makes things stickier and they can hold up more and push out farther and you have more ins and outs and um, and does, uh, I think, do better with efflorescence and that kind of thing. So Carve Right is a good, solid product. If you want to get it, give it a go. Um, and uh, it's probably a, there'll be a link to uh, his site there. Look at the colors we have in here. Absolutely amazing. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. And the tarp's gone. So this is towards the end of coloring. And you see the bleeds, I call them, antiquing, where color comes off. I believe that's uh, exterior latex paint. He may have, these are also stain, concrete stain colors that could be being used here. I didn't get the confirmation on that. Uh, the stains are great for bringing color down and darker. Um, you can't get a stain that goes up and lightens things up unless they've come up with that, which last time I was looking around, they just didn't have that. Um, so we're seeing the finish. This looks like the finished project, project before the scaffold's been removed. On the backside, wonderful brushing technique over here. It almost looks like lava rock. Um, flat areas where you can put candles or potted plants. Got a sago palm in the back. A concrete mixer over here <clears throat> um, for bulk mixing of stuff. Um, and I'm looking over here trying to see what little tricks and tools he has here. But uh, same stuff that all of us fake rock guys do. Notice the smaller little grouping, smaller little details. Light color, almost almost a white, really. Contrasting the darker colors, a much more orangey, uh, iron kind of uh, colors and textures on this thing. Absolutely cool. Brushing technique. So scrape a little, brush a little, brush some more. Might even use the uh, air hose to do some of the texturing. Look at that. Zoom in on that stuff. Absolutely amazing. Very, very, very cool. Now this picture is taken after the feature has been completed and it's running because we see the water in the back. And we'll get to that here in just a second. But I just, it's soaking in this stuff, looking at how the artist puts it together. We have the brush strokes here that uh, are really, really cool. And it's weathering. Look at this weathering right in there. Oh, man. Right in there. Pretty darn cool. Wow. I mean, you'd be hard-pressed to say this was uh, not just real rock. It's just... Uh, it's that natural and that the colors are spot on. Slight little flecking, black flecking, like salt and pepper, I like to call it. And here we have a picture of the front of the feature. The scaffold is pulled back enough to see what's happening in there. And there's those big rock portions. Uh, I don't often see guys putting rocks in there that creates places for water to go in behind. Obviously, all this stuff has been waterproof prior to the creation of the texture coat, the final texture coat. Starting pond is up at the top there. Move in on this. So that's going to get a little more of a finish right there. Or not. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe just this, and leave those little notches in the top that breaks up the waterfall so it doesn't look too, like, fakish. You know, folks love those big, long sheeting effects in waterfalls, but uh, they're not uh, as often in nature like that. If you get a sharp edge, you still get a better uh, drop off of the water when it's uh, when the front of the project of the feature is running. Simple finish down here in the bottom water level somewhere up in here, I'm guessing. That's the side of the pool, which will get plaster. And Richard included a picture of the plastering, which if you've not seen plastering, it's pretty darn amazing. So now the pool is done and we're moving forward. Let's zoom in on this thing because we can. I love the blue tile. Love that cantilever coping. Get your head out of the way. Okay. That's, I think those are actually uh, uh, template made bricks because they're so perfect that it does look more perfect than important place cantilever coping concrete. Um, so a lot of times they'll take and use p uh, paper templates and make the exact stones that are absolutely fit together like a p perfect pizz uh, puzzle puzzle <laughs> puzzle piece. <laughs> so here's the length longevity the length uh, angle looking at it. It's not super tall. It's shorter than me. So that might be four and a half, five feet up there. Um, and you want your projects to fit where they're put. You don't want it to be too overwhelming uh, unless the client wants it, you know. And I did have a client, one of my first, that had uh, a road noise that was very bad. And you wanted to try and block it with a giant big feature, which we did build. Wonderful texture. Look at that. That could be a little air hose. Or you can rinse it off with a hose once the cement starts to go off. One of the big tricks to making fake rock is using 
uh, the material and modifying it at its various stages of, of uh, firming up, of getting uh, going off and getting set. It be it's at first it's just mush and it'll just rinse and blob away, uh, which is the time you can do certain techniques to get it to, to that are cool. But as it starts to go leather hard, is the word I like to use, you end up with uh, great little textures and the brushing. It's so simple. It's so simple. Just get a little brush and tag and scratch and do whatever and then brush it and it just it just brings it right to life it's absolutely it's so simple and direct and and you know not hard to do you just got to practice and a bag of cements nothing you know you, you know so you can practice all this stuff at home if you're trying to learn how to do this and then on the job same thing blowing this out look at that that is so natural looking there with that brushing and and then uh, you can see the streaking laterally it, it just uh, sort of igneous rock i would say metal i guess with the lava ish kind of feel about it this is going into the hot tub you can see that right there absolutely awesome i like to keep things where people are not too sharp and edgy so that's nice and smoothed out pretty good and it's going to be just wonderful look at the colors absolute perfection in those colors oh love it oh man unbelievable this is absolutely gorgeous let me zoom in with my little tricky tricky mouse look at that is that real or what man so that staining drops down the plaster goes over it ain't no problem at all look at that zooming in we have river rocks scattered around a little bit up there you want to have small little rocks with your big rocks definitely fractured dark colors light colors just getting the colors right i tell you guys if you nail the colors you've nailed a big big part of it zooming in here on a, a focused uh, detail here right that's the spa so we're looking at the spa rock moving towards the waterfall portion lumpy bumpy look at that so he's using the shock creep material to get that texture it's probably super fast to do that too not tons and tons of cracks based on this style of rock it this is just just what you want not too many crazy cracks you know it's very it's very easy to end up just throwing cracks everywhere and you'd end up with a pattern before you know it it looks like somebody made it a man a man-made situation or what have you and it's not as natural outside we have pavers and then sod which is great uh great just i love sod it's a beautiful material get my head out of the way look at the colors there and and as i mentioned the the wonderful either port in place or brick coping stones with the blue complements the rock work it's good to have a different color if this all this tile and coping was all the exact same colors in here it wouldn't uh, they wouldn't set each other off as well so it's really great to have tile and coping complement the faux rock work here and you see the water starting to come off we'll keep putting through this thing close up of the tile there and how that's installed very interesting interesting tile what look at the texture there that's in there fascinating i've never seen that kind of thing before wow here's the edge of it <laughs> amazing a little white dust it looks like there all color see there's a ruggedness to it that gives it that natural look really important to use our our tricks of the trade to get that natural look richard is the master look at the back of this thing again i just love this stuff the colors are amazing Get my head out of the way absolutely beautiful the waterfall it comes up over that top starting pond breaks in behind goes underneath this stone come this stone um grouping and that piece looks like it would fit it looks like it's part of this one you notice the they're sort of in line and uh, so it's nice to just look at nature nature gives us the guidance we need all right so it's going on going down behind there Here's another look before the water, looking straight up, and the uh, photographs can be varied, and at daytime changes the, the contrast and hues a little bit, but lots of contrast with the darker colors to highlight uh, the textures, and it shows depth. More details. Look at that. Awesome. It's a little flecking. He can do that with a paintbrush, just sort of flinging off the tips with your fingers. Uh, cracking your wrist with a little bit of black in there to fling paint and you can also use pump sprayers for that stuff there's his little mixing cans those things you get at home depot um, tons of them in the paint section i use those on occasion uh, to mix up little things mix up patching cement uh, uh, mixes as well 
hose. Look at the colors, guys. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. So perfect. Ties into the wall with that natural stone look. Using the hose. Use a lot of water uh, when you're doing your paints. This is a reference stone that he sent me, Richard sent me, as an example of what colors we're aiming for. And we got them. He got them. Yeah, these this seeing this picture now, I see that this has been cut in place, so I'm pretty sure these are manufactured for this specific job. All right, guys, we're going to the plaster phase. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen folks do that? If you've never seen how they plaster pool, it is pretty amazing. These guys wear these little shoe attachments with little spikes on the end of them. Let's see if we can see them. Yeah, there you go. Look at those spikes, and you can see their footprints right there. So they stand on those, and it helps them get in it, you know, walk around on this very sticky plaster mix as they finish it out. And it's all finished out by hand, just troweling over and over. It's a lot of work. All, Mar all uh, Richard's rock work has been taped and masked off. It looks like the blue tape, which is a, more of a duct tape, a lot more stickiness to it. So it, it's because sometimes it's hard to get, uh, it's hard to get the, uh, tape to stick to faux rock a lot of time because the way you finish it and it's rough um, especially if it's been wet out and it's moist it's kind of a challenge so taping and massing all this beautiful uh, tile it's been covered there's tape right there it's hard to see the plastic but that has been there they put ropes across the pools and then they can hold they can have their um, air air lines there and they also have the machine right there that's got the air hooked up to it. And that blows on this texture. It's the same system I use for when I'm doing my fake rocks. It's a texture coat, so to speak. But this is what they do with plaster. Same kind of nozzle um, that they use for this sort of thing as I use for the fake rock. A lot of guys go into doing the pools, guys, when they do a plaster. you got to take care of it. And it has to happen fast. This is a pool remodel. You can tell that because they jackhammered off all of the existing pre-existing plaster and it's, the pool looks like this when they're done with it. You can do that two or three times with a pool before you run out of material at some point. Um, so these guys, you know, working hard to get that, that blue in there and as it cures, it lightens up and it's a different color. It's not quite that blue in the finish. Oh man, beautiful. Loving it. There's the waterfall launching out of there. Move my head out of the way. Beautiful. Uh, looks like a king palm in the back there. And there's that wonderful brushing technique. Little rinsing or airbrushing to get some of that stuff out of there. As it firms up, you can scratch it and uh, give it an airbrush. Blow out with an air hose or with water. Stick the back your buddy or trowel in there. If you want, you can get some holes. Again, that's showing you different ways of erosion that you see in nature. All right. Now we see this thing running, and you see the different. I'll get my, get my head out of the way. <laughs> Keep moving my head around, but this is so cool. You can see the uh, brush technique. The colors are more subdued because the sunlight's not really hitting it direct, so it's darker. Beautiful stuff. Oh man, love it when it's done right. Absolutely amazing. Wow. I want one in my house. <laughs> All right, we're looking at Richard Winget Authentic Environments.com. I believe it is Authentic Environments.com. Amazing, top, top, top level mastery of the mud. An amazing artist doing amazing things uh, out there in the faux rock industry. Good guy, too, man. A really good guy. Help you out if you need anything. Just let him know. Ask him questions. He's got tons of how to content, too, at his uh, website here in those, uh, those notes. Uh, the notes on this video will have that in there. All right. So let's uh, jump to a, a finishing slide. All right, man. Pretty amazing work, eh? What, what an amazing artist Richard Wingett um, is. And again, a nice, super nice guy. So just love showing, showcasing these guys out there. They're doing stuff that blows my mind. Just absolutely dialed in. Perfect. Matches nature. Exactly. So awesome, awesome. Uh, click his links. Check out his stuff. Uh, if you need rock work, I tell you, he's one of the best out there. Give him a, give him a look at, look-see, and uh, he'll take care of you without question. He's worked on complete for commercial grade stuff. I think Disneyland and other things like that, theme parks. So he knows his stuff will go anywhere in the world. I too, he's worked all over the place. So amazing guy, Richard Winget, uh, master faux rock artisan. 
checking it out. A little showcase here for my buddy Rich. And so, hey, man, um, hope you have a good day. Remember, Jesus is coming back soon. Get him in your heart. All you got to do is ask him in. He'll help you manage the rapids and the cool waters of the rivers of life. If you get him into your heart, he'll come in and he'll help you be able to get to the presence of God when your last breath here turns into your first breath somewhere. You can't be in the presence of God without being cleaned up because he's perfect and you and me ain't. All right, all right. So get Jesus in your heart. He's coming back soon before the wind, the world spins off its axis. Uh, if you want to learn how to do this stuff, DaveHenderson.podia.com. DaveHenderson.podia.com. Got free stuff there for you guys to download if you want. And, uh, and then have some other stuff at www.davrhenderson.com. Got some blogs, you know, dozens of blogs there on all kinds of things, full rock and otherwise. So have a great day. God bless you. Uh, remember, be grateful and forgiving every day, and you'll have a better day. I'm telling you, it's true. I've tried not doing that, and the days aren't as good. So give it a go. Learn, grow, become. Mr. Dave here on our um, reviewing, uh, again, a master full rock artisan. Until next time, have a great day. God bless you guys. And learn, grow, become. Go make some stuff. Have a great day anyway. Okay, bye.